Hey kids, welcome to uh, unit three, lesson one, one dimensional arrays, exercise number two. I just wanna note that exercise one's video really dived into what an array is and how to create one. We're gonna skip over a lot of the basics here and really just jump into the lesson. Let's see what we have to do today. In array manager, we're gonna write the create numbers method to declare initialize and return an int array to store 10 elements. Well, then we're gonna write get numbers length method to return the length of an int array numbers. Well, then we're gonna come down here to my console, call the get numbers length method and print the results. Looks like we're gonna create a method and it's going to have 10 elements to it, remember. Arrays are immutable, they cannot be changed once created. Then we're gonna create another method to return the length of whatever numbers is. After all that, we're going to call get numbers length and print the results. Let's go over to array manager. Down here, we have what looks like a private instance variable, but it's not. We didn't talk much about this in the last video. But this is how we declare an array object in Java. And as you can see, it follows the same logic as declaring a variable. We can identify the data type of an array element and the name of the variable while adding the rectangle brackets to denote it that it's an array. And there's two valid ways to declare an array. We can put the brackets after the array name or before it. And as you can see here, we have it before it. And again, I cannot overstate, declaring a private instance array is just like declaring a private instance variable and can be used the same way. We have a default constructor. We have our git method. And we have a place for us to write our method. And then it looks like we have another place to write the git numbers method. They gave us a lot of information here already, kids. First, I wanna say nothing changes from what we did in unit two. Still write methods the same way. We have public, we still have our data type. Now we're putting square brackets since we're creating an array method. We're naming it whatever we want. They called it create numbers. And remember kids, we can either return something or we could do something void. Since there's no void, we're going to return. We use the brackets because when we declare our data type, that's the same way we do it. We do int with our square brackets. Next, we need to name whatever we want the array. We're just going to call ours values. Remember, there's two ways to declare an array. This one is declaring a blank array with 10 elements or 10 spots to it zero through nine. We have to match the data type square brackets again. This time inside those square brackets, we're putting the number of elements we want, 10. Don't forget your semicolon. This time we don't return nothing. We want to return values or the list length. So we're going to get rid of null and put values. Let's go down here and do the same to get numbers length. How do we return the length of numbers? And we want to return the length of the numbers array. What's numbers? Numbers is the private array that we created. Down here under our constructor, you can see we set in array manager numbers equal to create numbers. And what is our method name? Create numbers. And if we want to return the length of that, we have to call what we want the length of, that's numbers. Whenever we just want to get the length within whatever method we are using, there is a, another call that we can do, a pre-written method. And that one is our dot length. Now return the length of whatever we're calling. That means if we call get numbers, it's going to go to numbers and get whatever that length is. 
Now, all we have to do is call this get numbers length here. Let's go back to my console. We're going to do a system.out.println. And what do we want to call? Well, they created up here an object, my array manager out of our array manager class. So we are going to do my array manager. And how do we call methods all the time? Well, same way we've always been doing it. We're going to use the dot operator, get numbers length method we want to get. Don't forget your parentheses and a semicolon. Now when I hit run, I should get the length 10 printed out. Let's see if I'm right, kids. Oop, looks like we got an error. Let's check this out. We have our, oh, remember kids, we need the new keyword. Let's hit run. I'm sure this is going to work now. And look kids, we get our number 10, the length of the array that we created. Key takeaways from this lesson kids is how we create a array. Again, there's two different ways. We have our data type, square brackets, array list name equal, if we're creating an array that is empty with a specific number of spots to be stored later, we have to use the new keyword, the data type, and then the number of elements that's going to be stored in there, followed by a semicolon. If we know the values, we don't have to use new, but we use curly braces. And I think we're going to work on that one next lesson. We also learned that the dot length method that is pre-written for us returns the length of the array we call. Finally is how we create an array. Again, they are created and used much like variables. Think of them like variables that store multiple pieces of data. An easy way to tell if you're working with a variable or an array is those square brackets. Remember, there's two ways to declare an array with the brackets before or after the array name. Hopefully kids, this video helped you understand what 1D arrays are and how to write methods to create them. As always kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later kids, bye, bye, bye.